Welcome to the Red Pegasus Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Martin Garcia and Darian Clark. All right, so let's get this show on the road. Um, special guest in the studio, someone we've been uh, trying to get a hold of. <laughs> she's just so busy, uh, has very little time for us. No, I'm just playing. Uh, she's great, though. We have Monty Black in the studio. Hello and welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, like we said earlier, you know, we've had a lot of scheduling conflicts. Uh, we're both, all three of us are just busy people. So thank you for working with us. And uh, we're finally glad to have you in the studio. Yes. Um, Imani, I mean, she, she, I just asked her what her titles were and what she wanted. And she was like, <laughs> oh, you know, just this. No, no, no. Okay. Photography, videography, digital art, uh, yeah. just so many things. She's an influencer. So I'm going to say what she said, Dallas content producer and photographer, but that is, she is not limited to those things. She does <laughs> absolutely a whole lot of other things, yes. which is great. You might've seen a lot of her stuff on social media. And uh, if you're a frequent to local businesses, I'm sure you've seen some of her stuff there as well. Um, so let's start it off easy. Uh, just tell us a little bit about you. Like, how did you get into this? And, you know, did you go to school for it or, or anything like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been in photography, into photography since I was like 11 years old. That's when I got my first camera. I remember I was like in sixth grade mm -hmm. and I've always loved taking pictures of like things, my friends, everything. So got my first camera back in sixth grade. My parents bought it for me. Um, and then about 12th grade, I got my first, I purchased my first camera, which was a Sony. And I'll never forget it because like, as soon as I got it, I ended up getting an iPhone as well. And mm. I started like <laughs> focusing on like mostly using my iPhone to take pictures and everything. And then, you know, I graduated from high school, went to college at UNT. Um, I'm not from here, by the way. I grew up in North Carolina. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I grew up in North Carolina and then graduated college or excuse me, graduated high school and then went to UNT. And from there, you know, I mostly focused on school, but I was still like creating content. I didn't even realize it back then. It was just like, right. it's just, you know, you're on Snapchat. I had a, yeah. a good following on Snapchat during that time. Um, I used Instagram, of course, and then VSEO or people call it Visco. I don't yeah. like Visco. Yeah. You don't like, yeah, I've heard, I've heard Visco before too. Yeah, yeah. yeah Visco, I don't know. I. Back, ever since like back then when I was using it, I thought it was VSCO. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I used to use that, post my pictures on there. We would, I would travel occasionally, so I would post that as well on there. And of course, Snapchat, Instagram. And then um, that was throughout college. And I would say about 2016, I started really wanting to, I begged my parents to get me like a new camera because my Sony was old. It was like... Yeah. Not even a DSLR. I don't even know what it was called. <laughs> was it just then. like a point and shoot camera? So yeah. you just come like, yeah. cool. I'm gonna take a picture right here. Yeah, eight megapixels. Yeah. Eight, eight megapixels. Yeah, right. I used to watch all these like YouTube videos to like even decide to get that camera. But um, <laughs> it was years later though. It was about my senior year of college at UNT, and all throughout my years, I had always wanted to do photography like professionally and YouTube as well. So begged my parents, finally got it for my birthday, my 21st birthday. <laughs> and go. ever since then, I hit the ground running. Like nice. I got the software and learned how to edit in 2016. Um, 2017, um, I started working at Dave and Buster's. And I was that was also my last semester of college, too. So we were like doing a bunch of things in school with. You know, I, were, I went to school for advertising, so we were building a portfolio of like all our projects and different things like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, we were while we were building that, I was also like wanting to build my I had the idea to build my own portfolio for photography um, while working at Dave and Buster's. And <laughs> like I, I only worked there for like four weekends. I always say oh. four weekends. <laughs> That's awesome. I hated it so much. They had me scheduled from dusk till dawn because oh. I was like, I'm only available on the weekends because uh, I have school. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
Um, so I worked there, but during orientation, like the onboarding phase, like I remember they were talking about how like they were passionate about like what they were do. The founders were passionate about what they were doing. Um, and they really like they built something. They built it from the ground up. They started from the bottom. Like, you know, the typical story. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but it really did inspire me. Like I hated working there, but I always remembered that and kept it in the back of my head. So about after I quit, I started like just focusing on building a portfolio. So I was like, I need to do something. And that something was take pictures of my friends and edit it and mm-hmm. like build that. So like once I graduate, I can make sure I get money from this as well because I just love taking pictures. Like right. I'm a photographer. Like it was never about the money for yeah. me. Um, but I <laughs> I was I saw people like a bunch of photographers getting paid and I would pay them to shoot me as well. So it's like, wait, (laughs) I'm actually really good at this. I'm passionate about this. I should be getting paid for being a photographer, you know? There you go, yeah. yeah. So that inspired me. A lot of things were working out once my last semester at UNT. So after that, like, yeah, that was the beginning of like just starting a project Mm -hmm. and sticking to it. I released it like in May or June of that year and yeah, it's just been going. It worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Nice. It definitely has worked. Uh, we see that uh, now. So that's um, very interesting. So everything <laughs> kind of came at you at once near the end of the school year where you were just kind of like, all right, let's get this ball rolling. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what we love. That's that's kind of what these interviews or these guests that we have in the studio, we try and showcase and spotlight You know, a lot of Dallas people or you know locals doing their own thing and like following what they love. And that's always number one, I, at least to me, like doing what you love to do is always the best thing, you know, the, the best path to choose. And so it's, it's always awesome to talk to people and see people doing that and succeeding. And it's, it's great to see. So Thank that's you. awesome. Well Congrats said, Martin. You. Um, so you mentioned you grew up in North Carolina. So what brought you back to the Metroplex? What, what made you choose UNT to study advertising? Um, so I was born in Fort Worth. My parents lived in Arlington, so they're from here. Okay. But my dad was in the army, so we got relocated to North Carolina. So I grew up in Fayetteville. I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's a military town. J. Cole is from there, if y'all can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, (laughs) that's right. Yeah. Um, grew up there, and we used to visit Texas, like Dallas, a lot, because we have, like, a bunch of family out here and in Lubbock. So I would just visit often and we planned on moving out here a couple times like during high school. We never did. Well, I never did. It's a funny story, but I never did. But I was determined to move back out here for okay. college. And um, originally I wanted to go to the University of Houston mm. and study oh, okay. photography. Okay. <laughs> Do they have those uh, guys over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like you. <laughs> You chose chose a really good spot. Um, <laughs> is is Houston pretty known for their photography uh, I don't classes know. or art art department? I don't know. Hindsight, tw- like ten tw- ten years later, I don't remember. Yeah. But <laughs> I just know I wanted to go to Houston. Like I think I don't know what it was about Houston in particular, but I was drawn to it. I wanted to go there. They had the program that I wanted to do, which is mm. like photography and fine arts or something like yeah. that. Um, yeah, I don't really remember. I'm sure it was a reason, but <laughs> like we said, Houston, it doesn't matter. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but my parents, you know, all of our family is up here. My parents are like, if you're going out of state, no, you're not going to Houston. Mm. My dad, <laughs> you know, he's in the army, so he's thinking about all the dangers. Yeah, he's right. like, Houston is dirty, <laughs> it floods, there's mosquitoes. I, I ain't coming to visit you. <laughs> Just silly stuff. (laughs) Preach. Yeah, you know, just extra. So I I ended up not applying to Houston. I applied to UNT, Texas State, and SMU, a couple other schools out here, I think. And I got into UNT. um, And the reason why I kind of had my – UNT became my number one is because my parents were like, no, to U of H. And then, um, like, my favorite color is green. (laughs) Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, my favorite color is green. And, like, I used to love visiting Dallas. Like, I remember growing up and just passing um, what I know now is 35, 75, like, where they, like, kind of, you know, seeing the skyline on your right oh, yeah. side. Yeah. Like, 
oh my god, I used to love that yeah. when we would come through the city or just pass by. Totally. So you know, it wasn't really that hard. It was like my when my parents were like, "No, Houston." I was like, "Okay, I'm fine. I'll yeah. go to Dallas." Nice. <laughs> it's an attractive place for sure, right? It I mean, is. everybody and their mom seems like they're moving here as the past few years. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <clears throat> Why do you still call Dallas home today? Um. I feel like it's a part of my journey. Yeah. I was in my, I always say this, but like my room, my bedroom about 10th, 11th, 12th grade um, growing up was green. We finally painted it after so many years in my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I always say like I was plotting in that green room and mm. Dallas was on my list. Dallas, Austin, LA, New York, of course, and then yeah. Europe. But Dallas was number one on my list. I remember in high school, I used to always talk about Dallas because my parents, you know, they were, they grew up or they, they didn't grow up out here, but they, you know, became adults out here yeah. and had their, started their adulthood out here before having children and moving to North Carolina. Yeah. So they loved Dallas. They always hyped it up and that had a great influence on me. Nice. So just coming here, um, I definitely wanted to leave after college, after I graduated. Yeah. I actually almost, I was literally this close to moving back to North Carolina mm. um, after I graduated from college because I kind of given up. I hadn't gotten a job yet mm. and I didn't want to stay with my family out here because <laughs> yeah. they had like little kids and I was just, you know, what, 21. I'm like, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm right. laughs> and so um, I almost left and I just had a, like a crazy whirlwind semester but I feel like it was in my cards to stay here. I ended up being able to move in with my aunt. She lives in McKinney. Oh, nice. Um, and got a job at an advertising agency. And, you know, I was watching um, Sex in the City that summer <laughs> after graduating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, I want to go to New York or just anywhere but Dallas. But, you know, once I realized, like, my reality was looking like I was probably either going to go to North Carolina or stay here, I was like, you just have to thug it out. You have to, you just have to, like, I didn't come this far to only come this far is mm -hmm. how I saw it. Yeah. It was like, you put in four years in Denton and then you have like a little bit of experience in Dallas. Mm -hmm. But to me back then, I thought Denton and Dallas were the same. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, don't, I already been here long enough. Like, I don't want to <laughs> be in Dallas even longer. But now I know like I had to, like Dallas is so different from Denton yeah. and it's, I, bloom where you are planted i got i was planted here for a reason yeah. and i'm very happy i've stayed i like that bloom that's where great, you're planted yeah. that's cool seriously um yeah i think that's what's awesome about i mean i'm sure this is similar to other places but i don't really travel a lot so i sadly i don't get to see the world a lot but something that i like about texas is like every city is totally different from each other Denton yeah. is different from fort worth Fort Worth is different from Dallas. Goodness, Dallas yes. is different from Austin. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yes. Denton and Austin are different from each other as well, even though they're both, you know, more like <laughs> hippie towns, I guess you want to say, <laughs> college towns. Um, but yeah, that's what I like about Texas. Everything is just so different. No matter where you go, you're almost in a completely different world. Exactly. That's so, so true. I could see I could see why that caught your eye. Um, so you, going back to you finishing school and like staying here, so was that like a struggle for you? Was that the... Uh, a pretty intense in, in inner struggle for you, like trying to decide whether you should go home or whether you should stay or but what was that like for you? Did you, yeah, I know you have family here, but you know, what else inspired you to stay here? If there is anything else. Yeah, it was definitely because I knew I had the plan in my green room in high school. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I wanted to come to Dallas. Um, I thought Denton was Dallas. Like that was my yeah. perception back in high school. <laughs> so it's like, um, you know, like I remember J. Cole, there's a song, I don't remember the name of the song, but he said, <laughs> and I said, I heard this in high school and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is what I'm about. <laughs> but he was like, um, I came up here to take advantage. Oh, can I cuss? Yeah. Came out here to take advantage of that shit y'all take for granted. Mm. And for me, it's like coming from that small town in Fayetteville, I couldn't really like thrive creatively. And like my parents were busy and I was in their household. Like they couldn't really nurture my crafts, but I nurtured what I could during that time. But I knew like I was like, uh-uh, I'm going to Dallas. I'm going to make it pop. 
everything. And then when I got to Denton, I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, we're good. I had enough of Dallas. I'm ready to go to New York or LA or just anywhere, Austin even. And that wasn't the case. That just wasn't the case. I remember um, that summer after I graduated, I was working at the rec center at UNT and I was applying for jobs. I was even getting mentored by someone who was helping me like look for resume. I mean, not look for resumes look for jobs and like edit my resume and stuff. So they really supported me during that time um, while working there. But it just kind of, I guess through the summer just unraveled that I was going to either have to go back to Fayetteville Mm -hmm. and be with my parents (laughs) yeah, (laughs) or stay here and be independent. (laughs) Yeah. Stay here and figure it out because you know, I, I hadn't fulfilled like what I wanted, what I knew I wanted to do in high school when I was like, plotting essentially and don't have that hunger in you yeah i did and it's like did you really come this far to only come this far right like i don't it wasn't the case and then you know it's this was the this was the catalyst for sure my mom you know it's funny all throughout college my parents like no you can't come back home you need to make sure you get a job a good job and everything after you graduate that's what they had said the four my entire four years Mm -hmm. but it's funny when it came time when it came to that time where it's like I graduated, didn't have a job lined up, like a full time job lined up, they were willing to let me come home, thankfully. And my mom, she was like, you know, moms. <laughs> she was just talking lip to me one time, like, because we were like planning on my move. It was literally like about, I want to say it was two weeks before I was supposed to move to North Carolina. Um, she said something. And I was like, I can't move back home. I can't. <laughs> I fucking can't. Like, I don't want to deal with this. Like, yeah. I've come so far. Like, why would I go back to that? And then now I'm like really grown. Yeah. So <laughs> I done lived all this much. And just to go back home, it wasn't going to work for me. So I had to just, I asked my aunt. It was like super late at night one day. And she was in Iran because that's where she's from. And like, yeah, she was like, yeah, you can stay with us, or but you have to do this, this and that. And I was like, okay, I'll do it until I get my job and then I'll move, of course. And it just really ended up working out. But the catalyst was definitely my mom, like, nice. and just everything, a culmination of things. She said something, you were like, yeah, no, that's it. I'm <laughs> staying in Dallas. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. I got to. I can't go back. I can't. Yeah. We shouted out to Crossbar Soccer and Beer in Richardson, Texas where you chill and play every day. They have men's leagues, co-ed leagues, and pick up every night of the week. It's obviously the spot for playing fun indoor soccer, but you can also consume some of the best beers featured across our beautiful Metroplex and the greater state overall while hanging out with friends and family. They have TVs to watch whatever you'd like. Typically sports is on, but they take requests. Um, You can play video games there. Usually have FIFA tournaments going on. And then they have fun lawn games like cornhole, spike ball, and horseshoes, things like that. Crossbar in Richardson has been featured on Fox 4, Dallas Morning News, Dallas Sites, and of course yours truly, the Red Pegasus Podcast. Got to throw them in there. So if you're unaware now, have you been living under a rock? Go check them out and then follow them on socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at crossbar.dallas. Chill and play every day. Or just visit their website for all the information at crossbardallas.com. Then, of course, your boys got to drop their stuff here. While you're at it, follow us on the socials, Twitter and Instagram at Red Pegasus Pod. Facebook, you can um, follow along in our page or join in with the group and interact. We still have merchandise at the link in all of our bios via Teespring. And don't forget to rate, review, download the podcast, whatever platform you listen to. Smash those buttons everywhere you listen on every device and keep up with us. It's the best way you can support our little engine that could, our independent podcast. We appreciate all the love. Then most importantly, share the podcast to friends and family. Maybe you know someone who just moved here is wanting to know what's going on in and around town. We got you covered. The Red Pegasus Podcast. Um, so let's talk about um, your first, at least I think it's your first project here in Dallas, and that's Day Day with Dallas? Yes. So how did that come about? What What is that for those who don't know? And, and tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, back in 2017, I, you know, I, well, all, forever since high school, I've been wanting to like have a YouTube channel and 
showcase my life and what I'm doing and everything. And so I had the idea in about late 2017 to film. Like, I thought it was really interesting what I had going on. I finally got my ad agency job. I was living in D- Deep Ellum, mm-hmm. <laughs> downtown Dallas. I was like, oh, my God. And nice. then, like, I'm, like, exploring the city by, like, making friends and going out on these dates where these guys were, like, <laughs> I would see new stuff. So it was like, I think this is super interesting. Like, I want to share this, what I'm doing and my journey as I'm, like, going through it right now. And that was in late 2018. I had, the, or excuse me, 2017, I had that idea. And then my friend and I, we filmed a pilot in January of 2018. And then I just got shy. I was like, I don't think I want to share my life. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm just, I'm figuring it out. I'm just not confident. I'm not, I just, I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. And so the idea was tabled for a while. And then about, I got my, I was working at my full-time, my, you know, my first full-time job at an ad agency. And, you know, I just realized I wasn't fulfilled. Like Mm. I would just go home, go to work, go out to eat, go work out, like just doing the same thing, Mm. get on Twitter. And it was just so boring. And that's when I like realized I'm like, I'm a creative. Mm. The reason why I struggle doing this ad agency job, I was a, an office assistant. So like I was the secretary basically <laughs> doing that. I didn't struggle. I did thrive. But there were certain things where I did struggle. But it's just like, I ain't meant to be doing this. Like mm-hmm. I'm meant to be doing actual commercials. Like I went to school for advertising. I have it, two internships. I started a photo project. You know, it was still in its infancy then. But, you know, I was like, I've done all these things. Like why am I not? Why am I not seeing anything? Why am I at the bottom? Hindsight 2020, I'm glad I started there. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. during the time, it was just so frustrating to like not be taken seriously and not be able to have like, I'm like, I'm at the coolest, in my eyes, the coolest advertising agency ever and I'm making coffee. Like that shit used to piss me (laughs) off. Oh, so like, I was like, okay, well, since I can't do it here, I, I need an outlet. So let me just make it. And so the idea turned into it being like a documentary about or me documenting my life to verse uh, to me documenting the lives of like interesting people in Dallas. Because like I was like, I'm an interesting person. Let me show you my life. Like I'm doing all these things. But then it's like, okay, no, let me start. Let me show someone else's life because my life is a hot mess. <laughs> I'm just making coffee. Like, right? there's nothing exciting about this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I did do cool things there, but that, you know, it's yeah. just like. <laughs> I get what you mean. I don't want to showcase this right now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was like, let me just. I know a lot of cool people, people I knew from college and people I just been following on social media during that time. And it was like, I want to do like 10 episodes. I want it to be like Netflix. Like, you know, just thinking so big. And I was like, let's just do a doc. I was like, I want to do a documentary and document the lives of the cool people in Dallas. Like, I feel like I didn't realize so many people were doing so many things at once. Mm -hmm. So like me, I do so many things at once. But it's like, that's just the culture here, I feel. And I thought it was so interesting. And it was so new to me and different from what I like knew up until that point. So, yeah, I was like, okay, I want to do something. Let me think about it. So in about June, July of 2018, I had the idea. I had the name, everything. And I brought up the idea to my friend who had originally helped me film the pilot um, for my show. He he helped me, or we strategized, and we were, like, going into business together, basically, yeah. to do the documentary. And that that was really me creating and exploring Dallas during that time and showcasing it, but with other people versus me being the spotlight. Nice. Okay. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about like some of the people who you put on day with Dallas? I know I was, saw the brawlettes. Yes. They were a group that you were um, kind of showcasing. Can you tell us about some of the other people as well? Yeah, so the first episode was the Brawlettes. My friend George, the one who helped me um, with everything from the jump, he knew them. They're like an Oak Cliff, or I don't think they're active anymore, but they're an Oak, they're from Oak Cliff, and they seem like bubblegum pop and things like that. Like I mm-hmm. really ended up liking their music That's a cool. lot. So 
when we were coming up with a list of like people to interview, like I had my people and then like he came with his people he would want to like interview and they were on the list. So I listened to their music and things like that. And I thought they were so interesting. And he had all this footage because they had did shows and stuff. Yeah. So he had a bunch of footage of them anyways. I just realized to stop recording. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, he had a bunch of footage of them as well from their concerts and it was good quality too. And I was like, Oh yeah, let's use this and let's interview them. Like, let's do this. And so we did it and they're amazing. They were the first episode. Um, and then my friend Kelsey, I actually met her. She's a, or she's a publicist, super creative. She was doing like four things at once. Like, yeah. She's crazy when it like comes. Like you said, to- everyone else here is just doing so many different things. Yeah, she was doing a lot, and she, but her main thing was being a publicist, and um, I thought that was so interesting, so cool. So I got her to do an episode, and we showed. I followed her for several months, and then another person. Um, oh wait, let me remind it. Kelsey, I met her at a networking event in 2017. Like. Oh, wow. When I first landed in Dallas, I literally remember. I was like, wow. And then we ended up becoming friends. Yeah, perfect. There yeah. you go. And then Kali, this is the gem to me because we met in, at UNT. I wanted to work at the internship that she was at during that time because it looked so cool. You know, I was following her on Instagram and everything. Um, Instagram and Twitter. And she's so cool like she's a publicist as well but she's also like an artist like um a singer mm-hmm. and then she's she owned a an agency a public relations agency as well like during that time like she was just starting it. i was like oh my gosh this is so cool like let me interview you and we like i said we met and she in college and then we just kept in touch over the years and I had that. I worked at that internship for like two weeks <laughs> <laughs> during the summer. Uh, I graduated and then I quit because I was like, I don't have time to be like coming to <laughs> Dallas for free. It was an unpaid internship. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to get my money up. And I was working at the rec. So I was only there for two weeks. But that two weeks mattered because yeah. it is unfolded. Like that is a gem relationship because we. We did the, I met so many of her friends. Her friends have become my friends. We've like, we're, there's a group like of us and we're like all connected. Like it's so crazy how it's unfolded over the years. Yeah. And I think that was part of what I was seeking during that time is because like, I didn't know anyone in Dallas. Like everyone I knew was in Denton. Like Mm -hmm. they either graduated and stayed or didn't, or they didn't graduate or, you know, most of my people were in Denton during that time. So like. Doing the documentary really helped me like meet more people by networking um, and just making more friends and while also developing my photography and videography skills. Yeah, that's really cool. You're such like a people person and so good at curating relationships. I mean, that just seemed natural for you. So Um, it was bound to happen. Yeah, right. (laughs) I think that was originally when we discovered you was we started like I say we, our podcast kind of found Day with Dallas and kind of followed along with some of that stuff, watched some of it. Um, and that's like eventually how we found out that you were kind of behind all that, you know, so that's kind of cool to just to see all that come into fruition and see even now today, even though you've kind of shelved it now, is that right? You've shelved yeah. it or you've or you shut the door? Yeah, the door is shut. Okay. Um, shut it down in 27 or excuse me, 2021, December 2021. Okay, gotcha. Cool. And why was that? Um, I just felt like my brand overall was too segmented. Like I had five mm. Instagram accounts. <laughs> or I, four. I, I know the struggle though. I've got three, including <laughs> the one that we have for the podcast. So I, I know the yeah. struggle. <laughs> it was too segmented, but everything I was talking about overlapped. Mm-hmm. So it's gotcha. like, I love Dallas, but I'm Imani. Like I love yeah. Dallas. I'm doing, I'm behind the videography and photography why am I doing it under another brand and not getting the credit and mm. recognition, for, you know, or for what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I shut it down and just like my goal was to seg or bring all my brands under Imani Black, which is my personal brand, and go from there. But um, that page, the Instagram page, is going to get rebranded soon to my photography page. Okay. Nice. Awesome. Well, so that seems like a good segment right there, right? Let's yeah. get more into to this photography thing. And he, I know you shared your passion for it and how that came about, but like, 
Can you jump more into the art aspect behind it and why you chose to go that route, like turning photography into art as well? Yeah. Um, it's just kind of within me. Growing up, I've always been pretty artistic. Like, I couldn't draw good, but I would draw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't paint good or I can't do masterpieces. We would paint in school and stuff, you know, but right. I was mine was never the, you know, the masterpiece of the group. But I've always had an interest <laughs> in art and... <laughs> Um, you know, I, I don't know how I kind of got pushed into it, turning into art. It was never, it was kind of my goal. I remember when I first went to Kettle Art sometime in 2017 for this book festival, Lit Hop. Um, I, I got interested in the idea that I was like, oh, I can have my work in a gallery. Like that was like the first like light bulb. Cause I never, I just didn't know I was young. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, I mean, you, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> So I got, I saw that, that was, in, that inspired me back then. And then um, 2019, I got connected with Trinity Cider. Mm. They were a new cider bar yeah. in Deep Ellum. I think they opened in late 2018. And I used to just be, I used to be a degenerate in Deep Ellum. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get fucked, heck up, heck up so bad. Yeah. Ooh, mom and dad, hope you're not listening to this. Right. <laughs> I used to get so hecked up, but I used to have like a good time. Like I would be there during the day, night, photography, everything. Like I was there. Like, you know, I lived at the farmer's market, so it was like nothing. I used to walk from concerts there by myself, <laughs> silly stuff. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> like I was just embedded in Deep Ellum as like my place of entertainment during that time. Cause it reminded me of UNT or like Denton. Like Fry Street, yeah. Yeah, Fry yeah, yeah. Street. Yeah, yeah. So I loved it. So that was where I gravitated to the most. And I got hooked up with Trinity Cider because like one night, just at the beginning of 2019, like I've always wanted to be a bartender. Mm. <laughs> okay. I've always wanted to be a waitress. I checked that off. I was at Dave and Buster's a waitress for four weeks, four weekends. <laughs> Man, your resume is looking a, li a little funny, honestly. Dave and Buster's for four weeks, advertisement in uh, internship for two weeks. The other one where you were just serving coffee, you were like, yeah, I'm done with that. That was another two weeks in there, too. Like, I ended up being at the ad agency for almost two years. But okay, okay. I, it is all over the place. Like, I've, I've counted recently. I was like, damn, I had like 11 jobs. Like, ooh. <laughs> but um, I just walked around. I've always wanted to be a bartender. So one day, one night, I was like, I'm just going to walk around all the bars in Deep Ellum and just like give them my business card. And tell them, like, I want to work at a bar. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I went to, like, all the little bars that were open on a Sunday night. Um, and Trinity Cider was one of them. And I never had cider at that point. So, or hard cider. And so, you know, I was super interested. And, like, I had passed by that space that on Pryor Street, I think it is, where they're near Main and Pryor um, so many times. Because I'm always in deep, I was always in Deep Ellum. And it used to be Cobblestone. Do y'all remember that? Deep Ellum? Well, I don't know if all of Deep Ellum, but I know that street next to Trinity Cider was, it used to be cobblestone. Like, even if you drive over there now, I think they repaved I think it. They, but... I think they still have, like, some of the little alleyways, Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. are cobblestone, yeah. Yeah, so that was always interesting to me. And, like, I used to walk past, like, when they, that building used to be, like, nothing was over there. And then the Pico Lay Pops came, and then Trinity Cider, mm. and then something fries and something came um but it used to be deserted but i was super interested in that area and then i finally saw that trinity cider was open and so i yeah i went in there that night when i was just walking around all the bars trying to figure out how i can become a bartender and they told me all the bartenders or all the bars told me this but they told me to get my tabc license mm -hmm. and um send them my resume and so i did and i also gave them my business card and I was trying to work there so bad. Like, <laughs> I was like, cider, I don't have to learn how to mix cocktails. Like, that's so easy. So I wanted to work there. Yeah. And um, it ended up being that they were like, hey, why don't you do art here instead? And I was like, what is Okay, yeah, okay, I'll do it. This is in 2019. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And so um, they told me the kind of exhibition that they – the idea they were like we want to do like an all women's exhibition something in the news had happened during that year i don't remember what it was but something 2019 like women's rights was it the was, was it hashtag me too 
I, I wonder if it was maybe the Me Too movement or something. I don't remember, but I remember they were like, we want to do something focused on women. Okay. And I was like, oh, I can do that. Like, I have friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, that was my introduction to, like, turning my photography into art was nice. they wanted me to curate an exhibition. I was already working on my photography project so that when I started in 2017, I did it again in 2019 and then again in 20, oh, excuse me. 2017, 2018. I did it. I've done it consecutively up until 2021. So, um, but then, you know, it was like I had like two years of work. Plus, I had started getting like booked for photo shoots. So it's like mm-hmm. they saw my website and they were like Im- really impressed. And so, yeah, they they were like, why don't you put your Black Series photo project in here? That's the name of the project, the That's Black cool. Series. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, did it had a party at like my first gallery <laughs> yeah. exhibition and yeah, opening awesome. night that's i was cool. like oh my god and i was like their <laughs> third artist they had they had just opened so they only had like three at that point um because they rotated it out after a couple of weeks and i was their third artist that they put up nice. my work that's awesome and something was born huh yeah i sold <laughs> prints like people were like i want to buy that like and I was nice. like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to figure out how to do that. I'm not sure. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was such a, like, fun thing to curate. And I'm so glad I still continue to do the Black Series photo project after that. Because it was hard. Like, I had so much going on. I was hunting for jobs. I was seeing this guy. It was like, it was just a lot going on during that time. Mm. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to do this ever again. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did do yeah. it. <laughs> like we said lots of talents always staying busy and we are definitely going to dive into some of those projects as well as well um uh but kettle art and right kettle art Mm -hmm. and trinity cider but you work with other local businesses too i know so can you tell us like kind of like how the connections were made there and kind of like what you do with those local uh businesses yeah so i used to hate coffee yeah, really? I did. Because looking at your social media, I'm like, wow, this <laughs> woman loves coffee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I used to hate coffee um, up until 2019, actually. <laughs> 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 and it's because, um, well, I had I didn't really drink it growing up. I was a kid, so why would I drink it? Right. But I did have it once. My mom and I, we went to Starbucks, and I had it at night. I ended up staying up all night crapping because I didn't know. So after that, I was like, nope, I'm good. I hate coffee. I don't want it. We're good. I'm a tea person now. I'm yeah. staying away from coffee. That's it. Yeah. Even in college, like I never drank coffee. Really? Like, never. Did you do you have any all-nighters in college? Or? No. No? I was not the best student. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was this, um, in bed <laughs> whenever it was time. I was trying to do an all-nighter once freshman year, I ended up falling asleep. I was like, yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> um, but I made it. C's, de- get, C's get degree. <laughs> yeah, that's there you right. Go. <laughs> but um, that that was my introduction. To, or coffee is related to this. I'm, I'm getting there. 2019, <laughs> my job at the ad agency, a restaurant opened downstairs. I used to give us free coffee every morning. Oh, nice. Free cold brew. Ooh. So, like, I was throwing them coffees back. I used to get, like... <laughs> Three. Oh yeah, I remember I worked at the ad agency and I used to make coffee. Mm-hmm. I never drank it. I never drank it until twenty I didn't even I don't think I ever drank it while I worked there until I mm-hmm. went to the downstairs restaurant. But you know, I had to make the coffee and so that was another reason why I hated it too. I was yeah. like, Ugh right. like, oh, I'm not doing what I want and I'm making freaking coffee like the intern. Like, oh, it was such a yeah. a stab at my ego <laughs> right. back then. Um but you know, towards the end of my time, like that restaurant open at the end of my time at that job, like that restaurant opened, they gave us free coffee. So I used to drink it all the time. And like, I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. I was throwing back coffee like all the time. <laughs> and then I was also drinking. I don't drink anymore now, but I was drinking and I used to go to Trinity Cider all the time too. So like culminating that relationship with just coffee and cider, those are like my interests. So that's how I kind of like got my way into a lot of things is by like focusing on my interests and like embedding myself into it in a sense. So um, with Cider, it was the art gallery. And then, of course, like um, COVID hit and, you know, we ended up working out this deal with Trinity Cider where, oh, yeah, COVID hit and then Black Lives Matter 
mm-hmm. summer mm-hmm. 2020. Um, I ended up being able to broker a deal with Trinity Cider where like I was helping them promote their new cider. There's like a a new cider. It was called Black is Beautiful. It was not for me. It was uh, <laughs> it was like a national thing that a bunch yeah. of like cider bars or breweries were doing. Yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of breweries were doing that summer to like honor the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm-hmm. So Trinity Cider was a part of it. I was basically the face of it now that I think about it. (laughs) I was promoting their, the drink and the drink was like a stout and it's like related to coffee somehow. It was like Mm -hmm. their cold brew stout cider. Uh So, you know, black is beautiful. The coffee cider. I'm like embedding my interests right there or being Mm -hmm. involved with something that I'm really interested in right there. So that was just a build upon our relationship at that point. And then in 2020, I I did the my photo project, the 2020 Black series, and that was the one that kickstarted me. Like that's the the photo project that like is just been up from there. Yeah, like I great. took this picture, yeah, and I didn't even know it was a big deal in Dallas at that point. I just always yeah. thought it was a really cool thing. Yeah, outside of the Omni Hotel, uh-huh. and I took that picture, and then I'm. Of course, my other pictures that were in the project, but that was the project that kickstarted me to everything. And so I started getting like, I wanted to, just so many things happened. I wanted to put my work into art galleries because I had the experience at Trinity Cider at that point. So my goal was to be in three art galleries in 2021. And so I used the work from there, from 2020, and I was in gallery in a gallery at the beginning of the year at Trinity, at Trinity Cider. Um, and then I was just hustling. Like I was, I walked up to kettle art one day, the summer of 2021. And I was like, Hey, I'm a photographer. Here's my work. You know, like, you know, can I get in here and all that? (laughs) And they said, yes, like on the spot. Like, yeah, I was, it was crazy. So then that was like a check. (laughs) And then, so that was two galleries at that point. And then, um, what happened? I also got linked up with Flying Horse Cafe because I'm oh, in the yeah. downtown area a lot yep. and they're right across from AT&T. And it turns, I didn't even know, I didn't even realize this at the time, but they have the Pegasus on top of their building as yeah. well. And uh-huh. it's, you know, Flying Horse Cafe. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea that <laughs> yeah, they that's... were in the same building. Yeah, the Magnolia. Well, it's two different places that have the Pegasus. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the big one that's up at the top of the building. I had no idea that they were at in that building too. Yeah, the Magnolia Hotel. Because mm-hmm. huh. it's the Magnolia company that used to oil these it's a lot. I yeah. know the history now. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, episode one of our podcast, if you want to hear <laughs> it back in twenty twenty one, we go over that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Check was working with them, had the Pegasus, everything. It was a good exhibition. Actually, I didn't sell anything, but it was still a good exhibition. But, you know, I just hustled that summer and yeah. got it. And then at the end of 2021, I did um, a 3D art gallery. And, excuse me, I did a 3D art gallery with my new work I have produced that year, 2021. And... um. I wanted to get it in another gallery. Like I was planning to do like an exhibition at um, LTH Deep Ellum. I had a connection because the manager, I just, I knew her and she was at, she was there and we were talking. I used to visit and we were talking and she had hit me up before it even opened saying that she wanted to get my art. She had purchased my art that summer as well before she even became the manager like officially that year, later that year. So it was really like, it really just aligned from like having these relationships and just building upon it. And so 2021, we were going to, I was going to curate the space with all my work in 2022 Mm -hmm. last year. Yes. But I kind of got burnt out from doing galleries Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I did like four that year essentially. Mm -hmm. So I ended up being able to broker a deal with them to curate their space with other people's work. And just have mine like somewhere in there. I I had the Pegasus in there. But my work wasn't the focus. It was like other artists' work and giving them a platform that ended up being able to come out about that. That's awesome. And for those, she's pointing at her bag that she brought with her. Beautiful tote bag. uh, Yeah, beautiful bag. (laughs) It's the Pegasus uh, photo that you took. Yes. And it says, what does the far end say? I can't. Oh, it says creating and exploring Dallas. Yes which is what she mentioned earlier as well. And she pointed at the bag. 
So I just want people obviously can't see us. So I just want to make sure they're like, what is she pointing at? I'm <laughs> right. so confused. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, we were looking at your website and, you know, just saw all the things you're doing, of course, and all the local businesses. And again, that's something else that we love. So it was great to see that and want to make sure we get those people out there too. Um, is Trinity still open? I, yes, yeah, they're right? still open. Okay, cool. Um, so let's, um, jump into something a little more recent. At least I think it was a little more recent. Um, at the end of last year, uh, you went to Art Basel. You attended the Art Basel. We don't know what that is. So <laughs> expl explain to us what that is. Is it a convention? Is it an art exhibit? Is it a gallery? What, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about it and the trip and where it was and all that. Yeah, so I went to Miami Art Basel. Bar Basel. It's so hard. I've been saying Basel forever. And <laughs> yeah. Well, just, yeah, the way it's spelled, you would think it would be Basel too. So Yeah, yeah but it's like... It's European or German or something, so it was Basel. But um, I went to Art Basel, and it was really – it's an art convention. I actually been wanting to go ever since, like, high school. Like, I used to be on Tumblr a lot, and <laughs> people used to, like, talk about it on there. And then Jay-Z had mentioned it in his song, Picasso Baby. Mm -hmm. He was like – uh, it was like two Bugattis parked outside the Art Basel or something like that. Yes, yeah. you got it. <laughs> Twin Bugattis outside the Art Basel. I just want to live life colossal. So I heard that, and then, of course, being on Tumblr, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I've always <laughs> wanted to go. <laughs> and so when I got there, I kind of knew what it was. I didn't really understand what – I didn't understand the full components of what is happening until I actually went. Mm -hmm. So it is an art convention, and there's like a bunch of artists, like um, galleries as well, that come to Miami for Miami Art Week. So um, Art Basel is a convention and it's around the world. So they have one in like, actually, there's this a state, there's somewhere called Basel. So that's where it started okay. in Germany. And then they have it in Tokyo and then Miami and then other places as well. So they come to Miami for Miami Art Week and... It's like, that's like the main event, but it's like a whole event. Like there's a bunch of like, Miami is packed with like art. Mm -hmm. I had no idea until I got there. It's a very artsy city. <laughs> um, but there's a bunch of galleries and artists and everything and they all come together and there's like events everywhere. I'm trying to think of an equivalent here. I just, I would say South by Southwest would be kind of an equivalent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like an official conference, but there's also like it's a small bunch of little mini things events. going on around, yes. around the event as well. <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of like that. And it was, but Miami art Basel specifically that convention is at the Miami convention center. And there's like so many galleries, artists, everything exhibiting their work. It's great for like people who want to buy art and people who want to see it. So that's what I did. I went to go see everything. Um, I made a vlog about it on my YouTube channel. Nice. And um, it's a really cool event. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go again, to be honest. But really? Yeah, it's just, I wouldn't go to that event in particular because I feel like I saw what I needed to see. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I saw moments that went viral on Twitter there. And I was like, oh, I was there. <laughs> I didn't even see that or, you know. It's a huge convention, um, but you're just looking at things. And I feel like I've did that a lot last year. And now mm. I'm like, um, I just want to create. To move on. I, create. Yeah, I've seen and I've been to enough like art fairs and stuff. It's 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 different art, but it's the same thing. You yeah, know? definitely. Seen one, you've seen them all kind of deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel that. Did you... Um, see any notable people there did you see jay-z did he park his two bugattis out bugattis outside the convention or so here this is what i've learned actually since i've gone so like i said miami art week is like the thing but you know people call it art basel mm -hmm. even though it's like miami art week right that um so like there's a bunch of like celebrities and stuff and rich people who fly down but they're not necessarily going to that convention they're there at a party and like mm. Soho House is there. Um, just they're there at a party. There's like rich. Miami is rich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just got back from Miami too. Uh, a couple oh, I weeks saw your ago. shirt. Yeah. So I definitely know how much money they're making over there. Yeah. Gosh, they took a good amount of my money. That's right. Sure. Same. I can tell you that. 
So it's like they're the rich people come down, but they're not necessarily going to those art eat that art event. They're there to party or go to like smaller galleries. Got it. And it's like that's what I'm saying. Like with those small, like South by Southwest, South <laughs> South by Southwest. There's that official conference, but then there's all this other stuff going on. Those like two weeks, basically. So. It's really like that. He's there, but he ain't at the yeah, convention he's center. Not at the convention. <laughs> the he's, Bugattis are, but he's in a different, <laughs> totally different location. Exactly. And Pharrell, like so many cool things were going ah, on. Pharrell, Pharrell had like a pop up. Um, Billionaire Boys Club had like a pop up. I was gonna go, but I ended up not going. Um, but it's like so much like mm-hmm. going on there. It's really cool. Um. So, speaking of your YouTube video, I was checking it out. And uh, I noticed you said something in the YouTube video, and it was pretty interesting. Oh, and God. I want to know, <laughs> I want to know a little bit more about it because I think it's just like a fun fact. I think so. You said you like to visit Forever Twenty One <laughs> and <laughs> cities that you visit. Do you just love the store? Like, what is what is it about Forever Twenty One that you just want to visit every time you're in a new city? <laughs> Oh, you got deep in the video. <laughs> um, yeah, so I do love Forever 21. It's so funny. I used to hate it in high school because, like, my parents would have let me shop there yeah. and, like, other girls could shop there. So mm. I was a hater. I was like, I don't want to go there, even though I literally couldn't. <laughs> Until about 12th grade because um, my friends and I would go to the mall. So it's like, you know, I would go there. And I yeah. was like, oh, my God. And, like, I used to travel um, quite a bit throughout college. So, like, every time I would go, like, there was a Forever 21. (laughs) (laughs) And so it's just been a habit ever since then because, like, they are always there. Yeah. Like, when I remember specifically when I started this habit was when I went to New Orleans. I was, like, 19. And (laughs) I was walking around by myself, and they have, like, that boardwalk. And um, there was a Forever 21. So I used to go, I always go there. And like, I like Urban Outfitters. I actually bought Kim Kardashian's selfie book. Oh, really? <laughs> at a Urban Outfitters back in the day. So I like going there too, but it's like, you know, it's expensive. So it's not like my main like focus when I go, but it's like, it's just staples in like mm-hmm. every city. And I always just like to see, they look different. Like mm-hmm. I went to, <laughs> I went to one in New York and it's huge like they're all so different (laughs) that's so funny yeah you just said that and i was like huh that's interesting i wonder what it is about forever 21 that she just loves to and has to go to these stores every time she's in a new part of town that's so funny (laughs) that's my thing (laughs) yeah so let's jump into the coffee stuff so you're a coffee drinker now um do you have what's your go-to order for coffee and then do you have one for the cold weather? Do you have one for the warm weather? Mm. Do you just get the same thing year round? Like to me, <laughs> it's always something cold. I don't care if it's 50 degrees, 30 degrees outside, 80 degrees. I'm always getting some sort of cold coffee. So right. what, what are your go-to orders for coffee? Mm. Um, So I started drinking it in 2019. And for the longest, it was cold brew. I used to love cold brew. Hindsight, it was so nasty. Like, ugh. <laughs> It's gross, so I don't I don't drink it anymore. But um, started out with cold brew, and then I found or I tried the the pumpkin spice latte, hot. I was just I was just I love it. I love me a PSL so much. <laughs> like oh my gosh. So um, you know those were my early like coffee days. Yeah. <laughs> And now where I am and where I've been for like the longest, um, I used to be like just super iced coffee no matter what like Mm -hmm. even in nicole like back in 2021 just straight cold cold iced coffee Mm -hmm. and i used to love it with sugar and everything then gained some weight so (laughs) i had to cut back on the sugar (laughs) makes sense so i my go-to like for the longest has been um like an iced latte no sugar nothing Mm -hmm. and with oat milk and then i also I tried this like at the beginning of last year because I just wanted to find an alternative, uh, an alternative to uh, like the cold drink or like a hot drink instead. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but I didn't need the sugar. So I found out I like black coffee. Mm. Really? Yeah. That's hard to get into. Yeah, it's an acquired taste. That is definitely hard to get into. (laughs) Absolutely. So that's my go-to is an iced latte with oat milk, no sugar, and then same with black, just straight black, nothing. 
Wow. That's <laughs> that's tough. Yeah. Gangster. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That, I can't do that at all. It's tough. And obviously a lot healthier for you too. So yeah. definitely understand that. But you won't see me going black coffee anytime soon. So. <laughs> that's for sure. So you already mentioned mentioned LTH. Do you have any go to coffee shops in the area? Is that one of them? No, not anymore. Okay. Um, but my go to coffee shop lately has been um commissary. In downtown okay. Dallas, okay. they're like the blue building on Main Street. If you yeah. see it, like heading towards Griffin, what is that? I guess I don't know the direction south, maybe. But um, I like going there. I'm really cool with the bar, not the bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really cool with the baristas. Coffee. Baristas, there yes. we go. Thank you. I'm really cool with the baristas there. They know my name. Like they're so cool. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah, that's my. You should get a uh, like a collab going with them. Like, can I get? Can I order the Amani? <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Like, yeah, sure. We got we got it coming up to you real quick. Right. <laughs> um, so you mentioned earlier um, that you don't drink anymore. Do you, Do you mind ask? You know, if we ask why is why that is? Is it just something that you just wanted to give up or? Yeah. So when I was plotting in my green room back in high school, <laughs> I used to follow Kim Kardashian a lot. <laughs> And she didn't drink coffee. And so, or not coffee, excuse me. She didn't drink alcohol. And, you know, she's so beautiful. So I was like, oh, like, her health. of course, I know it's surgery and stuff now. But, like, you know, it was just really inspiring to me that she's so beautiful and successful and a businesswoman. And she doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. And so right. that was inspiring to me back then. So I kind of decided when I was really young, before I could even drink, that I wasn't going to be drinking like my whole life. Mm. Like I knew that I was going to stop drinking. I didn't know when. I knew it was going to be a whole life, my whole life thing. So just over the years, I've had like a bunch of crazy degenerate, de degenerate behavior, <laughs> everything. I used to get really wild <laughs> when I would get fucked up. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, just over time, I just realized about a year ago, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be su su successful if I keep drinking and mm. like keep doing stupid stuff, mm. which is what alcohol would make me do. So I let it go. I chose myself. And, you know, I kind it was already in the cards because I decided when I was really young yeah. that I was going to stop drinking. So I stopped drinking about a year ago. May 2nd, it'll be a year. Good for you. That's Congratulations. awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, seriously. Thank you. That That's green awesome. room. Yes. Yeah. A lot happened there. Seriously. Awesome. A lot. I, you know, it's crazy because, like, I, I have friends, so I would hang out with them, of course. But, like, I just had so much time to, like, myself and to just really think. And I used to do, like, fake interviews and stuff. So it's like, you know, I just had so much time professional to be. Professional now, so. Right. <laughs> be in my cyber, like, not my cyber fantasy, to be in my fantasy world and kind of, like, Think about those things that I knew I wanted in the future because I just had the, the time, the, yeah. the the ability, the mind to do so. That's awesome. If uh, you write a memoir, that should be the title. Yeah. I'm giving you all the creative rights for the title right there. The Green Room. <laughs> the Green Room. Be <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. That should, that should be <laughs> it. That's, that's good. <laughs> that's really cool. Okay, let's jump back into the Black Series project that you had doing, kind of still doing. Is that right? Is it kind of yeah. ongoing? It's ongoing. Okay. I just didn't release it last year. Okay. We want to know more about that because I think it's really cool. How did more, t tell us more about how it came into fruition and then where it all is currently. Yeah. So um, I kind of touched on it earlier with mm -hmm. back in 2017. I was like, I need to build my portfolio so mm -hmm. I can get booked for clients and like do photography professionally, you know, because I want to. <laughs> and, um, the first the idea I had while working at Dave and Buster's, I was like in in school during that time was build a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I don't have clients yet. I don't know if anyone's gonna hire me. It's okay. I'm not really looking to get hired. I just want to do the pictures. Mm -hmm. I so I gathered like a bunch of my friends that summer or like towards throughout that semester and and the beginning of the summer and took photos of them and edited them and just really strengthened my skills because. Wow. Yeah, it's a great project. Like when I look at my work from then to now, I'm like, that was a good start for sure. Yeah. Really good start from what I knew then to mm -hmm. like where I am now. Um, but yeah, it was to build portfolios so I could get clients. And I ended up getting my first client. I just found out this yesterday or re re remembered this yesterday. 
My first client, my first paid photo shoot was March 24th, 2018, five years ago. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. From the work I started in 2017 led to that. And I was like, wow, that this is <laughs> this is all written. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> For real. But yeah, it was for my love of photography. And I just continued at, the first year I did it. It was just such a it was such a very it was a passion project. I'm still passionate about it. But mm -hmm. from how I remember how I felt in 2017, it was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. I'm so excited. Like, dang, I really did this. I'm doing this. Yeah. And it was so cool to get all these pictures of my friends at the time and like people I was really cool with. And I just, I made it happen. And with that has led to so many other things as well. Yeah. Talk about a, a, a little more of those other things. Like, do you have any other projects up right now that you're working on or that you wanted to mention? Yeah. So since I was doing the Black Series, I did it every year. So like I would gather a bunch of my friends, take pictures of them. And then I would also, 2019, I started doing like landscapes. So I would take mm. pictures of like places and things instead of focusing mainly on people. Okay. And so that was the third year into it in 2019. And then in 2020, I finally, I had people, I tweaked my editing methods so crazy. I've, I've never at that point did anything like that. It was so mm. different. Um, and I focused less, or it was still about people, like my friends and everything, but it was also about like the landscape. That's how I got the picture of the Pegasus and yeah. everything as well, and a bunch of other pictures. And then 2019, it was like super, it was a lot. The 2019, or excuse me, 2021 Black Series was a lot. Like it was huge. I had a bunch of pictures of people, a bunch of pictures of like landscapes. And I kind of felt conflicted in the sense that I remember Frank Campania at Kettle Art. I showed him the Black Series. I did the 3D art gallery. And he was like, oh, this is really good. It's just a lot of things. Like, mm -hmm. it's not really cohesive. And I remember thinking, I was like, what are you? You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I didn't say that to him. Of course not. Right, but right. like, I was like, uh-uh, this is great. <laughs> then I thought about it a little later. And I was like, mm a lot it's like 50 <laughs> pieces of art yeah. on a gallery on your phone like that's kind of a lot i see it and so the idea that i had from that was i kind of i repackaged it oh here's the other thing it kind of got lost in the sauce with the 3d ga gallery because mm. I did the in-person gallery at LTH. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as the promoter, as the person, the everything for this, like this is my project. And I'm, I have all these other people, 10 other artists, 11 other artists who are like depending on me to promote this, to focus on this, to help them get, you know, what they need as well because they agreed to do this gallery um, with me curating it. Like I had to focus on that. Like that felt like my number one priority creatively during that time and it overlapped with the 3d art gallery so it was on the back burner and so once that wrapped up i started like spinning my turning the wheel started turning a little bit where i could think about like my project that i really wanted to do and i realized like i felt like the promotion for the 3d art gallery just didn't get what it needed i didn't sell prints for it either because like i was dealing with the gallery during that time mm -hmm. so it's like no I, I it's a conflict of interest as someone who is an artist, but also like promoting these artists. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So I put myself on the back burner, didn't sell prints. And then like that summer, about July, I think I started selling prints or August started selling prints. And then I was like, I was, I liquidated the rest of the prints that I had from my previous work that were at Kettle Art. And then I finally repackaged everything to Imani cyber fantasy. Mm. And the, Oh my God, it was that, that project, this project, this is what I'm still currently like in right now. Yeah. This is my baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I'm so proud of it because it's like I could have let that work I did in 2021 die just because like, you know, I had something else that was bigger or big going on too. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I just repackaged it and I made it more cohesive like Frank has suggested. Mm -hmm. And I've seen like so much success from still like doing it. And I released it so late in the year. It was in September. That was like, no, that wasn't the latest I've ever released it. But it was like, I released a project in December, then one in September of the same kind of same kind of project. And it was like, I can't move on from this. I haven't fully seen everything through that I really want, which is like, 
I want merchandise. I want to do prints, of course. I want to do another 3D art gallery. I want to like, I don't know. I want to sell stickers. Like, I just want to do so many things yeah. with this work. So I can't move on um, from it yet. And so I didn't do the 2022 Black Series project mm. because Imani Cyber Fantasy, that was, it was like an extension, like a continued promotion essentially at that point of like my 2021 work. So I think that answered the question. Yeah, that's okay. cool. Is that the is that the shirt you're wearing that kind of goes along with it? Yeah, nice. That's cool. Yeah. I saw a picture on I think it was on social of you riding the Pegasus. Yes, <laughs> so, so I cool. got that created in January. Nice. Um, my cousin she made it for me because I was like, I want to, I got to see Monty Cyber Fantasy through even more. Like, yeah. there's more I need to do, but I want a logo to go through it. So I took like the Pegasus picture. This one, yeah, I have like two versions of it, but I like this one more yeah, because that's cool. um. I realize that picture can be taken anyone. Like anyone can, can take that. I've seen that picture so many times, and I'm like, "Is that mine?" But no, it's literally, you know, a statue, someone else, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's an easy picture to like kind of replicate. It does have my own touch to it, but I just was like, "Mm." -mm. So I made this tweak and did this, and it's more like I call it my cyber Dallas. Yeah, Pegasus. yeah, that's cool. And it's because it looks like a cyborg mm -hmm. to right. me. Like that yeah. was the thing because it's Imani cyber fantasy world. That's cool. <laughs> or nice. cyber fantasy. I like that. And um, yeah. Can we see any of these projects anywhere? Are any of these galleries still up anywhere? No, the three D art gallery isn't up, but I do have like um. A video of it that I posted on YouTube. Oh, it's like nice. thirty seconds or less yeah. that you can like see where I just like walk. <laughs> You're good. Mm -hmm. Where you can like see uh, see what it looked like, and it's like thirty seconds. Nice. And of course, all the prints I'm selling are from my cyber fantasy. Yeah, and you can get those. I mean, we'll plug all this later, but you can get all those pretty much online now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. All online. Cool. So, um, uh, like we said at the beginning of the podcast, Imani is just everywhere and <laughs> doing so many things and you've heard her talk about a lot of the things that she's done um true entrepreneur and we love that about you that's great uh can you talk to us about like how you keep going i mean you've got so much is it just like the drive in you is it you know what 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 keeps you going what keeps me going is really it, it is my drive like I feel like I've learned, I've listened to, um, mm, I can't even think of it, but I listened to this motivational thing last summer, um, an audio book, and they were talking about how like life is about the, the pursuit, or not necessarily the pursuit of happiness, but like you're gonna accomplish something and then you're gonna want something else. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Like if you just accomplish, I got these shoes, I really wanted them. Is that, is there, this is the only shoe I'm gonna wanna wear for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> I want to wear, I don't know. I don't know what I want to wear next, but you know, there's right. more, there's like, I accomplished one thing and it's like, I still want the next thing as well. And that's, I'm like, I used to feel like, why can't you just be happy? Like you did a whole documentary, like you're good, <laughs> but it's like, no, I'm not good. I still yeah. want to do, <laughs> I want to do another documentary. I want to do a cyber fantasy world. I want to do a 3d art gallery. I want to do like all these things. And I'm just super creative and I've had these like in my mind for so long, like that green room, I'm telling you, like mm -hmm. I was literally plotting in there. Like <laughs> this is not, none of this is an accident. All of this was written. It just happened in the way, the order it's happened. Like I thought because it didn't happen in college, it, it wasn't going to happen in Dallas or yeah. I, th I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't know how it was going to work, to be honest. Like I thought I was like, it, yeah. you need to go to New York or LA to make it happen. Cause right. that's where mm. that kind of stuff is at. Mm. But it ended up working where it's happening here and it's just unfolding everything. Yeah. It's beautiful to see. Um, you know, I know a lot of people get, put down when they don't expect it to happen by a certain time right like with you with college you're like it's it's gonna happen in college i want to meet all these people i'm doing what i love to do perfect and then it doesn't happen and then you're with that struggle like well now should i move back home should i stay here and so it's it's great to see that hunger in you and that drive to like keep going and be like yeah okay it didn't happen it sucks but like i'm gonna keep going i'm not gonna let it stop me and yeah. it's it's great to see you do that and just 
also not be satisfied with like what you've done. Like, of course, <laughs> mm. you're. Pr- I'm sure you're proud of what you've done so far and everything that you've done, the connections you've made. Um, but you know, it's great to see you being like, nah, I want some more. There, there's yeah. still more in me that I can give, and I'm definitely gonna give it. So that's great, and congratulations to you, because a lot of people don't don't have that, or you know, they wish they had it and stuff like that. So it's great to see you do that. And speaking of more things and more hunger in you congratulations on your new promotion with add to dallas you're the creative director on the board there yes can you tell us about add to dallas and and what that is what they do and kind of what you do as their creative director yeah so add to dallas i actually found them in college um i was in the ad club in my at my school and they, you know, they, there was a connection between Add to Dallas and AAF Dallas, which is the American Advertising Federation mm-hmm. of Dallas. And um, so I knew about them then. We, uh, and then in college, or excuse me, after graduating, I um, learned more about them. And so it's the AAF Dallas is for like all ages of like people who are in the advertising industry. Um, all, all professionals, excuse me, of all ages that are mm-hmm. in the advertising industry. And um, Add to Dallas is their, like, younger branch for, like, people who are 32 years old and younger. So um, I got involved in college, or excuse me, after graduating from college, I got more involved. Like, I got a membership. Because, you know, I was at the ad agency. Um, so I got the membership. I love – let me just remind this. Advertising, <laughs> I love – advertising like i love the industry when i was so pissed that i wasn't getting what i wanted at the agency like making freaking coffee and other stuff <laughs> and planning events which turns out to be like all of that ended up mattering later which is so crazy but um <laughs> like i said i wanted to be the oprah winfrey of advertising okay that was my thing and that's what i was like do the documentary mm. when you do the documentary who's got to promote it you so you need to do photography videography stuff related to it mm. on social media and so that's what i did and that's how the day with dallas page got built out even more beyond the documentary mm. but bringing it back the advertising club there we go add to dallas i got involved with them i used to volunteer at events um as a member and that was that's how I found I've gotten a lot of things as well as by 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 volunteering my time. Um, my boss at my head agency job, she used to volunteer me for a lot of stuff, volunteer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me to do a lot of stuff. And I used to get so mad. I'm like, I want to go make ads like I want to go to video shoots and stuff like that. But it all ended up mattering. Like I'm saying, like we're doing coffee or like planning events or offering to do other things like just you volunteering really does like open doors that mm-hmm. you may mm-hmm. not have gotten opened if you were like, it depends on your age, but it, it kind of doesn't. I feel like it, this can apply across life because, or in your entire life at certain points, but for young people specifically starting out, I know volunteering is definitely a good way to like get, get out there. Oh, yeah. So that's what I would do. I volunteered at their, um, their, their first event that I volunteered at was 32 under 32. And then literally five years later, I won yes. the award. Congratulations. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's gotta be so awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but that was the first event I volunteered at and I was just involved. I used to go to their events and everything. So it's a club for like advertising professionals who are under the age of 32. They're getting, we're, we provide, um, like networking opportunities, some like education stuff as well. A lot of different things to be able to support advertising professionals in the DFW area. And as a creative director, as of last year, (laughs) you know, it's actually funny. I was, so the title is creative director now, but in 2020, in 2019 to 2021, 2019 to 2020, that term, I was their senior marketing and communications chair. It's so funny. It's the creative director. <laughs> it just wasn't titled that back then. Got it. Okay. <laughs> but it's official as of last year. The title is creative director. Um, so, and I got that in October. And with that, like I do, I provide the ideas for like our creatives. So we have a mentorship program 
for, um, you know, students in college and people who are already prof- advertising professionals, there's a mentorship program. And so like recently, our recent project was that and I provided the I had to do some awful mock ups <laughs> of like <laughs> the logo, the ad and everything and provide the creative concept. So I was like, here's what here's how we should target or market this. Here's some caveats that we should think about. And here's a mock up of what like the ad, our promotion stuff, pr- promotional stuff should look like. So they took all that um, after they gave me the creative brief. I gave them that information and they made it happen. They this, uh, a graphic designer did all the work and nice. <laughs> all that. So now we've just been promoting it. And that's just one project. We have a public service project going on. So like the org we pick one nonprofit in the area Mm -hmm. and work with them to provide them marketing and advertising collateral and get them set up for success. And it's like a competition to see like across the the nation, like which advertising club, like provided the most impact Mm -hmm. by doing like this public service. Cool. Nice campaign. Yeah. Well, congratulations again on the promotion slash title change and, of course, on your award as well. That's really awesome. So we've got an award winner here in the studio with us. Nothing to brag about or anything. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Is there any way people can get in contact with the organization or can they just contact you or uh, what's what's some of that? Yeah. So add to Dallas dot com or dot org, I believe, is the website. Add AD, the number two, Dallas dot org. Um, that's the website. And then they have their Instagram as well at two Dallas on Instagram. And then of course you can always message me if you're interested in it as well. I actually had, um, someone who's, I think they graduated from college or they're about to graduate and they told me they're moving out here. They reached out to me because they saw, they were already following me from a, a, an event I hosted earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, they they're interested they want to do it so it's like i'm a poet in contact as well cool imani let's um wrap this up with the the question we ask all of our guests and i think i prefaced this with you before but we want to know what's something you wreck about dallas what's something you love about dallas could be a spot could be experience an event could be an individual um go ahead and share with our audience something you recommend for people to go check out in dallas I would say what I love about Dallas is the fact that the people are so welcoming. I'm not from here. I didn't grow up here. You know, I was brand new when I moved here back 10 years ago Mm -hmm. to Denton, though, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to Denton. Um, And then I moved out here in 2017. And just, you know, the connections I made back then to the connections I've made now and everything like it was just a welcoming type of vibe i remember hearing early on that like dallas is closed off it's competitive like people don't want people to eat and stuff like that Mm -hmm. that was never my experience i I never noticed it right you know i've been told i've been or told no i've been rejected of course but you know I, i don't really take that as like a you know a competitive thing or like them gatekeeping in a sense there is an element to that I have learned now. I'm seeing it. I'm experiencing it. But, you know, I feel like overall, like when I first started here, it was, it's just, it's so welcoming. So, so much to see as well. Like, that's how I've been able to like do, do different things. Mm-hmm. But it's all related to like the same thing, kind mm-hmm. of. It's Dallas related. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's so many different things you can do. And I just, I love it. I'm so happy I've been able to grow here in my like early adulthood and just build and be what I want to be and do it here and have people be so welcoming Mm -hmm. as someone who's like not from here and just just try to learn and figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. Good word. Yeah. You mentioned uh, earlier how you were in Florida and Florida was like, very popular with art. And I was like, listen, Imani, you're not going anywhere. Okay. You're staying in <laughs> Dallas. We need you. You're not going to Florida. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from going to Florida. So. You're not leaving Dallas. You're staying here and you're sticking with us because we love you and you're doing awesome things. Congratulations on everything. Um, what are social medias, websites? How can people get in touch with you? You know, what do you offer and stuff like that? 
Yeah, so online, my website is imaniblack.com. My Instagram is imaniblack.com. Or excuse me, it's Imani Black, my Instagram. And then Twitter, Imani Black Photo. TikTok, same Imani Black Photo. I'm on YouTube as well, Imani Black. <laughs> I think it's a pretty simple way to find yeah. you. I think nice. you've got it. Yeah. You've got that on lock, that's for yes. sure. That's good. Yes. Um, and I also do vendor markets. Kind of don't want to really plug that in. I might end up, it's, it's given Dave and Buster's type vibe. No. I, I think I'm about to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I do vendor events sometimes. Um, but my online shop is where you can buy my art as well. I have prints. They're currently $30 online. And then I have like a merch shop as well, which there's a bunch of different like items you can get with my art as well. Um, nice. So yeah, thank you so much for yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for dog. having me today and letting me. Bleh. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank Get you for joining us. Definitely, yes. it was such a pleasure on our end, and thank you for taking the time to come in studio to do this with us. It's been a joy and pleasure to get to know you and. We can't wait to see where you catapult off these other projects I know. into more greater mm-hmm. things. So thanks again, Imani, for the time. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you all too.